let's talk about what it means to submit in a romantic relationship. There are all of these videos on social media right now that are either, you know, red pill men talking about how all women need to submit to them because they're so vastly superior. Or on the other hand, there are women who create videos talking about how they are independent, they are strong, they've always taken care of themselves, and they would never ever submit to a man. I think the problem with both these sets of videos is that you have people who have a very off kilter idea of what submission is and what the purpose of it is. So I want to tackle those myths today. For starters, this is my personal belief as a woman who's Christian. Submission only applies in the context of marriage. So if you're coming to me, which I get sometimes from clients or just people in my DMs, women saying that their boyfriend wants them to be more submissive, um, I would say, why are you even having that conversation? Because submission is for marriage. The Bible talks about wives submitting to their husbands. So there's nothing about boyfriend in this. Now, second, submission is not about a man being domineering and it's not about a man having control over a woman. And if you're a woman, submission is not about being weak. It's not about being a people pleaser. Um, and it's not about just going along to get along. If you are in a relationship and you feel like you need to submit in order to keep the peace, in order to keep him quiet so that he doesn't get angry or violent or anything like that, that's not submission, it's abuse. Third, submission only works when both people involved have some power. And this is the thing that I really don't hear a lot of people talk about. Again, submission is not about control, right? It's not about someone domineering someone else. And this is where I want to get into the definition of what submission is. Submission is when a person who has power, resources, has intelligence, cedes that control, willingly gives it away for the sake of a greater good, of a greater purpose. So what this means is if you're talking about a wife submitting to her husband, you know, I think a great example of this is Proverbs 31. You know, we hear that verse all the time read during like Mother's Day um, in churches or like a first lady's birthday or something like that. And if you read Proverbs 31, you'll see that the Proverbs 31 woman was a business owner. <laughs> um, she had multiple strings of income. She managed the house and, and ruled everything that happened in the house. And, you know, people called her husband a great man and they called him blessed and all of that because of all the things that she did to help make this household a great household. She willingly gave those things. So in the context of submission, one, a woman has to have power and resources in order to submit them. You know, if she has nothing um, and she has no options, she's not really submitting anything. She's there. And by virtue of the fact that she needs someone to take care of her, she has to go along to get along, right? Instead, when we are talking about what submission is, in the case of submission, it is saying, yes, I understand that I can do these things on my own. I understand that I am capable of solving this problem myself. I can run this household myself, but I'm willingly giving some sort of control to you at this moment with the understanding that it is for the greater good of the household. So that could mean something like, you know, I am married myself. So what is not submission would be if I did not have my own job. I didn't have my own career. I had no resources. I had nowhere else to go. So I would just have to do whatever my husband said because he was the one taking care of me. 
Um, it's almost a parent-child relationship at that point. What submission is, is let's say I wanted to start a second business in addition to the one that I already have now. Submission would be going to my husband and saying, hey, I'm considering starting the second business. Here are my plans for it. This is how I think it's going to go. Um, this is the type of investment I'm planning on making into it. And my husband says to me, yeah, I think that that second business is a great idea. It sounds really good. I think that you'll be good at it. You'll make more money. But hey, at this moment, you know, you and I have been talking about saving for a house. You know, I think it would be best if we focus more of our resources on working towards, you know, making that down payment on the house instead of you investing all of this money into a second business. In that case, submission would mean that I have my own career. So although I would love to have my husband's money to help me with said second business, um, you know, my husband actually funded my first business, <laughs> my current one. So although I would love to have that help, you know, I could say, you know, it really like, that's nice, but screw that. Um, I have the money. I have the resources on my own. I'm going to go ahead and start the second business. And once I do and it makes money, you'll see that this was the best idea. If I choose to submit, submitting means that, yes, I have the money, the resources, the time, the energy, whatever, to go ahead and start the second business without my husband's help. I am choosing, however, though, not to do that at this moment because I agree with my husband's bigger vision of, or not even bigger vision, his vision of making the priority right now being having another house or getting a house, period. So because I want to submit to that vision that he has, I agree that for now, I will put this idea of a second business on hold. That is what submission is. It is willingly ceding my control to what is a bigger vision for our family, for our household. That is submission. So with that being said, submission also doesn't work if there's nothing to submit to. <laughs> if you are a woman and you're married to someone who has no vision, they have no goals, they have no plans, they haven't shown any ability to lead and make decisions that are for the best for the entire household, not just themselves, then you have nothing to submit to. So how could you submit? Submission only works when one, you are in a marriage, a long-term permanent relationship situation where, you know, decisions that are being made affect both of you for the rest of your lives. It only works if the woman has something that she can submit, that she can give up. And it also only works if there is something, if there's leadership, if there's maturity, intelligence, um, a vision, a plan to submit to. Without those things in place, you don't really have submission. Instead, you have things like control. You have things like uh, bitterness. You'll have a man asking a woman to submit when he has nothing for her to submit to because he's jealous of all the things that she has. And so he'll try to bring her down or make her lower herself to where he is. You don't have submission unless you have mutual respect. You know, in order for a woman to do any kind of submission to a man, she has to really know that he not just loves her and cherishes her, but that he truly respects her as well, that he has her best interest at heart. She has to trust that in order to be able to say, yes, I can put aside something that I was thinking of doing for now for the greater good, because I recognize that there is a greater good. I recognize that you have vision and I recognize that it is coming from a place of protection from provision and that you are truly doing it out of a place of love, not out of a place of selfishness or jealousy or anything like that. So this is why it's really important also 
as well, if you're a woman and you have questions about submission, it's really important that you are very careful about who it is that you marry. Because if you marry someone who can't be trusted, if you marry someone who, you know, can't lead, if you marry someone who doesn't understand the concept of providing and protecting, then again, you have nothing to submit to. And this may be what you want. You know, I know women who are the breadwinners in their household, and not only are they the breadwinners in the sense that they make more money, but they are also the leaders in their household. So, you know, their husband has taken the what is traditionally a more female role of, of being the one who, you know, takes care of the household, um, and make, making sure that everything behind the scenes looks nice and all, while the woman is the one who, you know, handles the protecting and provision role. And if that's what you want, then, you know, you do you. But again, back to the whole idea of what we're seeing constantly on social media, you know, there's a lot of women who talk about hypergamy. There's a lot of women who talk about hashtag soft life. They want to be taken care of. Well, if you want to be taken care of, then this is going to put you in the role of being the submissive one. And if you want to be the submissive one, then again, you need someone that you are actually able to submit to. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions about, any more questions about what submission means. Also, if you want me to do another video and, and go deeper on some points that I made in this video, I'm happy to do that. And also, if you are ready to finally attract a healthy, loving relationship and to end the cycle of attracting unhealthy, toxic relationships, you're ready to break those generational curses of toxic relationships and, and family dynamics, and finally attract someone who both cherishes you and respects you, then you know the link to work with me 101 is also in the description to this video. So I will talk to you soon. Love you. Hey there. So you made it all the way to the end of the episode, which means I have two things to say. One, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. And two, you like me. You really like me. So I would appreciate it if you would show that like by subscribing to this podcast so that more people can hear about it and enjoy it as much as you do. And if you want to know more about any of the links that I mentioned on this episode or any guests that I've had, be sure to go to keisharice.com slash links. That's K-E-S-H-I-A-R-I-C-E dot com slash links. I can't wait to talk to you again in the next episode. So see you then.